Hi, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm trying to sell this melon to get my mom some medication. Do you think you can help me out? I have no money at all. You don't have money at all? No. All right, man. God bless you. Hi, excuse me, sir. I am so sorry to bother you. I'm trying to sell this melon to get my mom some medication. Do you think you can help me out? Anything. Like a um, dollar, two dollar, five dollars, whatever you have. I got like 75 cents. 75 that's cents. Got, that's that's all you have? Yeah, you can have it though if it's going to help your mom. Oh, wow. And what were you going to do with it? I don't know. I was probably going to get something to drink or eat or something. Wow. You're amazing, man. Like, this this is your cart? Like, this is pretty much... Yeah, are you living on the streets right now? Yeah, this is what I own. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you mind if I sit with you for a second? Yeah, like, no, talk no, to you, no, have no. a chat with you? Have a seat. Um, um, let uh, me ask you, like, how long have you been living on the street like this? So 12. I'm 33 now. So, so it's been years. 11. No, wait. Well, yeah, 11 years 11 years, yeah. 11 years so since you were 12 and you're 33 now so it's 11 years and if you don't mind me asking like what exactly happened how did you end up on the street uh when i was like 13 years old i got into trouble you know i i was uh doing some drugs and beat somebody up really bad and, and uh, did you do that in school or outside school no, i was outside of school I had outside ditched. of school I, yeah, oh. we were at a party okay and um when the cops picked me up they instead of arresting me they took me home and my parents and my PO gave me an option of staying home and, and, and being able to live with my parents under their rules. Wow. Or going out onto the streets and making a life of my own on the run. And I didn't no like way. my stepdad. Yeah, he beat on my mom and stuff, you know. Your didn't stepdad was kind of like hurting your mom every yeah, time? a lot. No way. And you used to see that? It, it, it used to happen in front of you? Every day he would verbally abuse her no oh matter Oh my what. God. I am so up. sorry, man. You had to go through this. I, I wish like, no child yeah. would have to go through all this. So, so so how did you end up like starting like live on the street what happened then so after? i decided to leave you okay know? you left uh, the house yep i was on the run until i was 15 years old uh, at that time i had a car and a job and i was going back to school oh wow um, so the two years that you spent on the streets you were able to get get a job in in those two years yeah i mean i needed to feed myself you know <laughs> right but how did you find a job? How did you have a car? How did you so, get there? So my buddy and his mom, his mom was a teacher, right? Okay. Um, he was one of our school teachers and, and he was one of our school tutors. And they took me in and he helped me stay in school. You know, he was a really wow. good guy. Wow. And uh, they helped me figure out how to get a job so I could save up money and get a car. You know, it was a cheap little, like, it was a, a little geo, you know? Yeah. A little stick shift car. It was a POS, but it got me where I needed to go. Whatever you know? whatever it is, man, it doesn't have to be something yeah. fancy if it's getting you to work, you know, on that's time. Right. And it, let, it lets you take, it takes you where you want to go. Yeah. I guess that's all you're going to need. I was and grateful. I, <laughs> I think that, that type of family that you're just mentioning about, they're so good people. They're like literally like an angel that yeah, helped you in your bad times, you know? And I think we need more people like that because in the world that we're living in today, if somebody sees somebody in need or help, mm -hmm. they just, they're like, oh, we don't know you. Yeah, that, that's that's, that's their attitude. Sad. So I feel like if you see any neighbor, anybody that's in pain, anybody that's in need, you can give them a hand, bring them to your house, get them a job or do anything for them. I think you should. Definitely. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know. What would be a positive thing you want to say to, to to people like somebody that was you when you were 12, 13 years old that is seeing the dad, you know, the stepdad abusing the mom. What should they do right now? What would you recommend you know them? What, honestly, I would recommend that uh, instead of keeping quiet and just letting it keep going on, uh, tell somebody at school, one of your school counselors, okay. let them know what's going on at home. That way somebody can come home and do a home check-in and see okay. what's going on. Maybe even investigate from a distance and, and just see the abuse that's going on. So maybe you guys can get get that person put on the right track to get into wow. some counseling or something, you know, and have a bit better of a life. Bro, that's crazy. That's such a great advice. At least you know that you're not going to advise them to go live on the streets because you know how hard it is. Now look where I'm at, man. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how hard it is, man. It's not easy. Like in the sun, even especially in the rain. Like where do you sleep in the rain? Uh, usually I get a tarp and cover up as best as I can, you know. Uh, lately it's been rough. People keep stealing my tarps and stuff like that. So I've only had like umbrellas and stuff. Got to go s sit up under an eave somewhere, you know, and kick back until the rain stops. Otherwise you're going to get wet and catch hypothermia and then you am, die, you know. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Did, did ever like your mom try to get a hold of you, try to... You know what, my mom was there for me no matter what. Right. Whenever I called her and said I needed help, you know, she would she would go to the store and help me get food and stuff if I needed it, you know. Of course, my dad didn't know that. That was and, a discreet, like... Yeah, it was a very didn't. discreet thing. If he would have found out, he probably would have beat her up, you know. Wow. And, uh, but she had love. It's, I'm your kid, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that's how parents are supposed to be, you know. 
bro that that is amazing you know that's such a great mom you know that at least even when you left everything she was yeah she's the best mom bro like the moms are the best like any mom right now doesn't matter how they are what they are they are still the best mom because the the way a mom can care for a son nobody can you know that's right and sometimes there's situations where we think our mom doesn't love us or our dad doesn't love us they do they always do yep. no matter what they might not like us at that time but they still love us they you know? they always do and now as far as food wise like where do you usually find food how do you eat um, every day honestly for a long time i was on food stamps you know? okay i don't know if you know what that is yes you go yes to the department of welfare right right right. And, uh, they give you food resources stamps. you know yeah and they'll give you food stamps if you're homeless and you need help um but honestly it's been eight months since i've been on government assistance i provide for myself you know i go out and uh, i'll fly a sign flying a sign means you go out and you hold a sign up that says you need right. help you know right People right decide whether or not they come by and give you money some um, people give you money or sometimes yep. food and i'm like me i'm fighting cancer you know what i mean so it's hard for me to get a job people consider me a liability most of the time you oh know? my god yeah, i am real, so sorry what kind of part. cancer are you suffering I have parathyroid carcinoma Oh my god, I am it's so really sorry. Rare. When did you get to know that you had cancer? Like six years ago, I started fighting it. This is the fourth time that it's come back in my body. Fourth time. So yep. it was gone fully yep. and it came it's back. Remission and it came back. Yeah, wow. And what did what has the doctor said so far? Like I've been through, I've been through 16 phases of chemo and radiation. I'm not legally allowed to take anymore. Um, oh my god. And so it's, it's probably going to end up taking my life sometime. No man, you you gotta stay positive, bro. Uh, yeah, like I, I you've been best, fighting you know? it. You're a very I strong person, lot, so. honestly. Like you're very, very like the fourth time. You said it came fourth time. If it went away third time, I think the fourth time is gonna go away. And you know what, bro? Um, this was actually a social experiment. I went to like so many people. Nobody wanted to help me. And this is not a regular melon. So what I want you to do is hold on to it, turn it around, and see it says something on there. Oh my God. Do you think I'm selling it for 30k? Well, yeah, you're trying to help your mom, right? <laughs> yeah, but nobody would buy it for 30k. I wanted to go ahead and give this to you, bro. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I'm serious, bro. This is for you, man. Dude, you know what? Look, there's this guy that works right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Johnny, right? Okay. You should give it to him. He works his ass off every day, and he's just trying to get up out of the hood. Dude. You want to give it to Johnny? Yeah. No way. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, bro. Like, come on. That's crazy. 